Welcome back to another episode of Common Freaking Sense. This is where we would like for you to come and sit down and talk with us about the things that actually make sense instead of all those people that want to scream racism, all those people that want to scream sexism. And when you look around, it's like the boy who cried wolf. Where is it? I'm Pastor Eric. I am here for you today. And we're going coming to you from central Wisconsin. And uh, I am with my co-host who is out on the left coast who has to deal with it more than i do chris say hi chris hi chris what's up guys over here behind enemy lines i'm a green brain medic a husband and a father and uh recently uh of the one-armed persuasion although i have oh. my i have my sling off tonight because I'm, I'm cool chilling in the uh, chair yeah but... you don't you don't want to be caught in front of the camera looking you know like with a chicken wing right well i mean some nights some nights it hurts worse than others tonight i'm doing pretty good so all right appreciate the shirt nice shout out there for the the pack go pack go uh yeah what's on the head i didn't, uh, I didn't we got see what the, you got we got we got the fleet farm because oh. i'm on team fleet farm not the team farm and fleet you know because <laughs> that's you a, got that's the a one brother deal. and not the other yeah exactly <laughs> Team Fleet Farm right. and this family. And you know, we've got a local radio show. I'm going to let people behind the scenes here just a little bit. We got a local radio show. I'm not going to mention the station that just absolutely drives me nuts. And um, there's some things that go on there that we want to make sure that we don't practice because we believe in show excellence. Uh, that means show prep. So one thing we have been around and we've been studying the issues, trying to see where in the world we can apply some common freaking sense. And uh, so we've kind of listened to other people, other things, so that when we bring you this show, we can give you some reliable information. But the other stuff that absolutely drives me nuts is we've got got somebody in a radio show that sounds more... like you're getting ready to do a bit. It's like, you oh, know what drives man, me nuts? It's... You know, I feel like I'm supposed you know to. What makes me sick? There you, you know go. What makes me what? so angry? I can, <laughs> right. I can just pick up some earthworms and tie them in knots and put them back. Ooh, that's cold, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's this gal. You know, so here we are. We do it for the love of information, for the love of wanting to get stuff out there, for the love of wanting to influence our community. And this lady's getting paid for it in every third sentence. She does a swallow, oh, oh, and so she'll I, be I talking the, to you. And the, all the of a sudden, dry she'll, mouth. I hate the dry mouth. <laughs> and and you can and, and you can hear it over the radio. And I'm like, chew some gum, do Lady, do drink, drink some water, something right here. Yeah, but look what both of us have. So you know, it will do it. Yeah, we'll get <laughs> caught because we have a camera. She doesn't have a camera. None of right. us, unless she's worried that she's going to. Oh, you that's know, a satisfying. That's like, a satisfying slurp, though. That would be, it like was I got. Slurp. I was sat. I was satisfied after I heard that. Yeah, that hit she the spot for me. Even drives me nuts. And, you know what the thing that drives me crazy is? Ah, uh, what? When people do like the vocal fry, they get caught. But instead of being like um or ah, they're like and they go into something. I'm just like, oh, as soon as I hear that, I just get like instantly angry. That's like nails on a chalkboard to me. I'm like, stop vocal frying. Oh, like, yeah, just yeah. either say something or don't. You're caught in that weird proverbial freaking, you know, you, you spot just, in between. You're you're in the vocal yeah. purgatory. Get out of like. <laughs> I, yeah, actually, that's a brain fart. Is what you're really hearing. <laughs> it's coming out their mouth. It's coming their out their mouth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's. It's it's just the way it is. But little things that. That, that annoy me like that, it's like you can do broadcast excellence. You can work this kind of stuff out. Ums and ahs is, is another one of those things. I'm sometimes looking for words, um, you know, sure. and you say it. They're called fillers. But if you, you know? don't want to do it, does, does everybody want to know the trick? You want to know the trick? Speak slower. <laughs> what, say it again. Speak what? slower. <laughs> Speak slower. That's exactly it. So right. you're excited. You know the words that are going to come flying out of your mouth. Okay, that's absolutely great. I'm thinking, and so I'm going to choose my words carefully. There you go. Just slow down. You don't um when you do that. And right. I, you just think. You're not mentally no, out of your skis. I'm thinking. They're Outrunning not. your headlights. But the, the problem is what eats me is like you and I are doing this. We're not getting anything out of it. 
but we do it for the love <laughs> of just yeah, not yet. We're we're, we're working on it. But we want to get the dissemination of information, connecting with people, and having that right. influence. She's getting paid. Yeah. She's getting that, paid. That, it's like no, get that's, professional. That's wild to me. And then the other thing too, on top of what you're seeing, is like I go out and I I do my homework pretty constantly uh, across the social media space. And I'm looking at other people's pages, YouTube pages, Rumble pages, and I'm looking at the products that they're putting out because, you know, a good idea is a good idea. And if somebody's hitting right. home runs, you're like, well, let me, let me see yeah. what they're doing in the batting cage. And then maybe right. I can implement and then what I'm doing. I mean, that's just, that's just good studying. Right. Right. It's like, right. it's like somebody that we both love told you one time, like, if you want to be better at basketball, go find people that are better than you get your butt kicked. Until yep. you stop getting your butt kicked, then go find then, the next group. And then you go find the next that. group that's better. Right, and then yeah. so that's how you keep yeah. moving up. And so I'm looking across this space, and I'll find pages that have like 100,000, 500,000, 1.1 million. And I'm like, dude, their camera looks terrible. They, they have the personality <laughs> of a human rice cake. I don't understand why anybody <laughs> listens to this. And yet they got like 1.1 million people that are apparently tuning in to watch them talk about – how they did something in Far Cry, which is a video, like Carson was asking me, the only reason I had that in my head is, Dad, have you ever seen this video game? And I looked at it, and I'm like, yes, I recognize the name, but I haven't played video games in so long. So uh, <laughs> I was like, I don't know what it's about or anything. But yeah, people will tune in to just watch somebody like eat snacks all day and, and play what? video games. It's Seriously? Just, it, it's weird. It's okay. Weird, so but... talk to us. Uh, give me, I, I got my next thing I want to give my... Mm, angst about but before i do because <laughs> of what it's related to therapy session up top tonight <laughs> yeah, absolutely give a shout out to yeah absolutely guys so we are building a network here we're calling it the common sense network and because of that we've got several shows that we're rolling up underneath the common sense network on one side you're going to get the common freaking sense that's here with me here with pastor eric uh, and then on the other side you're going to get the i came with fire podcast which is a is a military veteran centric podcast where we talk a lot of politics and stuff like that. And then we've also started up a live stream that's happening every Friday night, 10 PM Eastern time, almost messed that one up 10 PM Eastern time. That is also on the, I came with fire page, uh, but it is rumble exclusive. We're going over there because when we hit the live fire, it is, <clears throat> it is absolutely live and two things that you can never get back a bullet, and comments on the internet. So once you Words say it, it's that out go out, there, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's out there in the ether. So because of that, guys, if we were to put that stuff on YouTube, if that's where you're watching this is on YouTube, there's a lot of stuff that we say over there that is our opinion. We're giving it to you off the cuff. It is real, and YouTube would absolutely demonetize the channel. Yeah. In fact. A lot of the channels that I like to follow in the veteran community and the 2A community on you know, YouTube, they call it GunTube over there, those guys are getting demonetized, deplatformed, and taken off the internet. And it's, it's all been within about the last two weeks, uh, which is about the same amount of time that Kamala Harris has been the Democratic nominee for president. So yep. I, just, I don't know. Correlation, causation, I'll let you guys be the, be the judge of that. Hit the comments below and let us know what you think is going on. But the censorship has gotten so bad that a lot of the gun tubers are starting to be like, look, if we're going to continue to have platforms to speak, like we're going to have to go somewhere else. And so I've been telling a lot of these guys, like, look, we're on Rumble. We're trying to build a platform over there. Go over there because you can still see the content Freedom that you like to see. Speech. But people can can have different opinions. And the cool thing that I like about Rumble is they're not like it's not like a right wing thing. It, it gets castigated that way. Right. Right. Because they're a competitor to YouTube, but it's not. They have liberals over there, and their mm -hmm. thing is free speech, and you can say anything that you want, be it left, right, or center, Which no matter means how be crazy. be careful. Be careful, but, <laughs> right. but you can say what you want. It's free, it's so free that's speech. Right. So make sure you guys are liking the video. Make sure that you're giving it a follow. I'll do the thing up front. Jump in the comments. Uh, let us know how we're doing. And then please go follow the pages over on Rumble, on YouTube. Follow it everywhere because you'll see this content. But the Live Fire live stream, that's Rumble exclusive. That happens every Friday night at 10 p.m. And uh, Pastor Eric here is now one of the rotating cast members over there. So if you guys like him, I'm over there. He's on the rotation. You'll see him over there. We'll be bringing Common Freaking Sense to Rumble in a big way. And we're really excited about what we're building over there. The, the channel's actually grown by like 160% in the last two weeks. That's cool. So people, people are starting to go over there. 
And yeah. if you want to make sure it's us, look for our logo. You'll see it up over there in the top right other hand corner. corner. Yeah, and it's corner. our little <laughs> Abraham Lincoln with his green beret hat on. Uh, excuse me, with his thing. green over there. beret. <laughs> for me, it's over there. So right, but anyway. never mind. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so that brings up my next thing, and that is uh, we've got live that we're doing, and we bring people in. We like doing interviews. Producer, uh, you knock that off. <laughs> Kay's in the Kay's in the background producer. today, guys. Yeah, she's, if you want to know, she's here. She's, she's just in the time. background tonight. <laughs> she's got more time to mess with us. This is gonna be so, fun. All right, I see how it's gonna go already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's earned that anyway. And that's uh, behind behind the producer seat today. That's Kay. Uh, she's usually there. We've given her a microphone. Yeah, go ahead. Bring. Yeah, see that hand. Say hi, Kay. There it is. All right. Um, and, uh, so we're, we're having some studio <laughs> problems with, uh, uh, microphone and, um, camera but with that being the situation, she is straight up 100%, uh, producing for us today. And we do want to thank her for that. Um, awesome. So what I was getting at, um, was live wire or live wire. What I was getting at was live fire being live on rumble and with the ability to do um interviewing and things of that nature because i want to bring up my next pet peeve the worst interviewer in all of mega media you guys ready for this Bob, Bobla walters Bobla is dead okay so uh, we leave that oh, so what too soon <laughs> yeah a little too a little, little too she we have fond memories of Bobla. anyway <laughs> no Sean Hannity, Sean Hannity, for all the things that he sticks up for, everything that he does, but when it comes to actual interviewing people, he's terrible. He is a terrible interviewer. He, he leads he, people way too, way too far. And I haven't listened to Sean Hannity probably since before the last election because I really like be, be, because when, of when this Fox. When Fox yeah. rushed to call the election for Joe Biden and they were the first one to do it. Yeah. And then looking back on everything that happened and, and you know, the question was, it's like, did they make sure Fox was the first one to call it? So that way they could get all the people on the right to shut down. Because if it's Fox saying it, then it gives it like some kind of perceived legitimacy on that side. I'll let you guys hit the comments. You let you, me know what you, you think of that. that one. But ever since then. Uh, I stopped listening to Fox, really. I mean, if I'm traveling and, and that's all I have on the hotel TV, then I'll put it up and see what they're talking about just to keep up with stuff. But then when they drop Tucker, because I used to tune in to, to watch Tucker's monologues in the evening. Yes. Too. I always thought those were pretty good. But really, he, he was posting those on his Twitter and on YouTube. So I would usually catch them there as well. So I didn't have to like, tune in for them by any means. Yeah. But yeah. When, when he left Fox, that was it, man. I was like, I don't have any reason to ever go back and watch that that station yeah. ever again actually they have a thing on um fox in the afternoon i'm trying to think well uh, great gutfels is funny sometimes oh he's not yeah now he's hilarious his, stu his stuff's funny sometimes but again i'll catch it on youtube i don't have to go to fox to watch him yeah but uh, but still my, my my pet peeve for everything else the information well, Hannity, that he right, gets the the uh, guests that he can pull on because of his popularity level. And so, yeah, you want to be on Sean Hannity, blah, blah, blah. He is a horrible interviewer. He leads people so that they will say what he wants to hear. And then if he doesn't get them out of that because they have an opinion, because they're an individual, he jumps in on the conversation and oh, yeah. dominates it. So because he didn't get what he wanted them to say. And I'm thinking, why do you, just don't do interviews, man. He's a soundbite you know, hog. I mean, like that's what it is. Like he's after he's after the he's sound after bites. sound bites. I mean, I a mean, great example of what you were talking about was when he had Donald Trump on, and he he made that that joke about being a dictator on day one. So, oh no, no, I'm not going to be a dictator. Well, except for day one. On day one, I'll close the border, and we're going to drill, baby, baby drill, and drill. then and then and then uh, Sean like jumped all over him. He was like, no, 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 you don't mean that. Oh yes, I do. 
Because you're not going to, like, Donald Trump don't play those games. No, like, oh, we don't no, play that. You're not going to get not, him. Yeah, you're not going to get him on that. But it was just, it, 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 he drives me nuts. So much so because it's like, you've got an intelligent person there. You've got a great person that you're going to interview. Be a good interviewer. Pull it out for your listener and let him just give, or her, the, the nuggets of truth that they're able to do. Sean, shut up. Just, right. Just, 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 let him talk. Shut up. Let him talk. That's why you have the guests on and why I tune in. Oh, he's going to have so and so on. I'd like to hear what he has to say. And all next night, all you get, it's a, it's a seven minute segment and you get five minutes of Sean. Right. And after you know, you who's, know, you know that, who's fantastic like, at it though, blick. like the complete opposite. I mean, like we already talked about him once. Tucker is great. In fact, yes. his, his Spotify podcast just overtook Joe Rogan as the number one uh, podcast on Spotify just that quick in the span of a year oh, which Joe wow. Rogan had like a hundred million subscribers on there. So Tucker just overtook him as the number one. He had Dr. Dr. Benjamin Carson on the other night. And I, I just thought that that was, that was an incredible interview. And he was, he talked a little bit inside baseball about the last election. Cause Dr. Benjamin Carson was in the Republican primaries running, eventually mm -hmm. dropped out, gave his endorsement to Donald Trump. And that was one of the questions that he asked him, you know, was like, what was that like? You know, you were saying these things and even maybe slightly disparaged, although I, I will give Ben Carson this, like he did it in very tastefully, but he was like, even, you even slightly disparaged, you know, President Donald Trump's uh, character a little bit. And, you know, he does have like a little bit of a sordid past, like he was a billionaire, you know, like whatever. Um, he goes, and then you turned around and you, you know, you endorsed him. Like, what was that about? And how did that go? And so Ben Carson basically tells this story about meeting Donald Trump behind the curtains for the debates and just being actually genuinely impressed with his character. And I've heard this a lot about him. I'd like to meet President Trump one of these days because I've, I've heard speaking to him off camera when he's not being the dawn he is a very <laughs> genuine caring person i've heard that about him i've heard people that go up to meet him they've never met him before and yet he does his homework uh and i've heard that he works a room and even if you're the most insignificant person in the room like he'll take time to mm -hmm. search out and speak to everybody and then know things about you too whether or not you're married and how many children you have and ask you things like that. I've heard those stories about him from countless people, too many people for it to be, you, you can't get the right on, on a single talking point like that. Right. You know, the left, the Absolutely. left, they have their talking points that they stick to the right, like, and so cannot devolve. They, they, Correct. They, they, they can't get away. But from I've, it. I've heard that story so many times from people on the right hand side that I'm like, that's gotta be true. There's gotta be something of truth to that. If everybody's saying um, that about him. Well, you know? just, just in general, uh, I'll give two different stories and then we're going to get, uh, we're going to need to take a break here, uh, for our first break. So, uh, get ready with your stories. Uh, we've yeah, got yeah. an onslaught of them tonight. Yeah. But I'm ready to go. A lot of stuff's happening really to... fast. Two stories that that makes a comparison. Number one, let, let's start with the uh, compare and contrast. We're going to talk about President Obama uh, being from Hawaii, goes out to Hawaii, uh, gets a tea time, and on the particular golf course, oh, I, I don't. This. I think it's on Maui. I don't think it's on Honolulu. I think he was on Maui, and uh, one of the particular courses that he was on. I'm just going to pick a green number, but it's it is like on 12 or something because he's going to do a Whatever, full 18. Sure. And um, he goes out to the course, and as he's getting there, the one particular green is overlooking the ocean, very picturesque, and there is a wedding that is getting ready to happen right. there. And it's a, um, a captain is getting ready to marry an enlistee. He's an officer. She's enlisted. but You might I want believe... to go back and fact check that because yeah. that's – I thought that's... he was a captain. So, uh, okay, let well, me Well, but off. don't say that if it's not true because yeah, – <laughs> two army... could be – to be two very army personnel, <laughs> two army personnel, to which sure. Obama is commander in chief. I mean, he's their boss. He's the ultimate boss, right? And so he he goes through. Now, to me, the coolest thing would have been, oh my goodness, let's go photobomb this and get a picture with the bride and groom, wish him well, and move on to thirteen. Well, because because I know how this story ends too. This is just another game of golf to you. It's, to it them, is. I'm just to playing them, around the golf. To them, this is you know, could be one of the most significant days of their lives. Right. And you know? so, and so the it's commander like, in on. chief comes walking in, photo bombs their wedding. 
Something um, like that. And, would have and, been sweet, and, you know. Whatever. But I mean, still tastefully. I, I'm, I'm, you know, you could actually do that and still be obnoxious. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but I mean, do it tastefully. Yes. Get, a, get a picture with the bride and groom, you know, whatever. And then move on, move on to hole 13. Right. Okay. Just, just and and just move on. <laughs> and and instead, as the story goes, he wants to play through. They have to disband the wedding plans, postpone it for I think it's like an hour and a half because right. of the amount of time it takes to get the whole entourage through to play the green and to get up to the next fairway and tee off and and then be gone. And for safety purposes of all the other guests, then after an hour and a half later, they're allowed to come back and then finish the wedding. Yeah. I mean, huge inconvenience on the bride's day, her special day. And you got to know they paid a penny to get that picturesque green. Right. And that's the other part too. Like they're paying a lot to get married there in Maui. Right. <laughs> like contrast that with Donald Trump, President Trump is coming out of the um, New York, the United Nations. And as the mm -hmm. entourage is coming up and out of out of that, a particular firehouse he has got signs. We support Donald Trump and the entire firehouse that they could spare because, right, they're on call in New York is there and they're holding signs and everything else. That, that's it. We support you. And he's driving by. All of a sudden, it just stops the whole motorcade. And the Don cracks open the limo, comes out of it, starts shaking hands with all those guys that came there just to say, I support you. It looked like 14, somewhere 14, 18 guys were there. Obviously, there's more in the firehouse because you got to keep it stocked, ready to go. But the, those guys that was there and he got out and spoke to every one of those and and shook their hand and let them know that he appreciated them supporting him yeah and Man, i'm sure because i've seen him do this difference. too he doesn't just walk through and do the grip and grin and then leave like he actually stops and takes time to talk to everybody and talks when he to does you. those type of, yeah 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 that's that's powerful it really is like you, you can't overlook stuff like that when it comes to the people that that operate at this level whether it's like a political elite or you know there's a reason that that his crowd right the ride or die MAGA crowd yeah like they're up, they they will they will stand and get shot at before they before they give up on him and I say that because, because I watched them it. I watched them do it <laughs> well there's a I think they will take a bullet for him there's a couple of things going on there number one most of the people five percent know what it is to hear gunshots and it doesn't spook them right right yeah well that, I, you're talking about like the type of people that would be in a in a trump crowd yeah that's yeah. got to be part of it but at the same time i can't begin to tell you how many people that i heard oh my goodness pandemonium broke out people started screaming and running and i'm like let me look at that again no no there was some screaming around the people who were hit and they were bleeding. They were screaming around them because of the situation that was going on immediately where they were. So if you want to talk about that screaming, but nobody was running. Yeah, you know, people are saying that it was, uh, it was an act of God. And I got to say, the more that I watch the videos of it, the more I am convinced, not just because of the ballistics of it, which are insane enough, Right. But also, I don't just think that God was over Trump. I think God was over that entire crowd. The crowd. Agreed. Right? And, and, Agreed. And, you know, how could you say that? Somebody died. Other, you know, two other people were shot. Of course they were. Yep. Right? Now, it's, it, I can say this. I, I'm saying this from a point of faith to say, like, who knows what's going to happen in those families' lives. Uh, the one that lost their father, Corey Comparatory. The other two that were shot. Who knows what God's going to do? in their lives as a result of that of that horrible day who knows mm -hmm. what god's going to do in the country as a result of those people taking bullets you know behind president trump and and who knows right what everything that that's going to come from this you know right. and then on top I, of I that mean, the Trump's bible says already it is a pointed back to honor yeah, him what a, so what a what a move yeah. oh man what what a move like yeah. i was just like yeah no 100% that's the and this is after the Secret Service issued a 
uh, statement that said uh, they they don't think that Trump should do any more outdoor rallies. Outdoor events. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm sorry. So since you're like, you know, total bleep at your job, right? The president can't campaign anymore. That's not how this works, Bubba. Well, and and are, do you know, especially in small town communities, because Butler's not a, a massive town, okay? Right. For Trump to go and to be in the places that he wants to be, he needs to be outside because he proved it the other day. What was that at eight or 10,000 seating arena? And mm. there was, maybe it was 20,000. And, and there were still another 15,000 people outside. That happens Whereas everybody if it goes. was an outside event, he could have had everybody together. But because but if you were, they if moved you were him to believe, inside. If you were to believe the press, and we'll get into this as a little tease for, oh, for the who's okay. who and what's new. Tease. But if, if you're to believe the press, it, it would seem that the uh, current vice president of the United States has tightened those polls right up, dude. But in fact, <laughs> she's edging him out a little bit now because, man, that's just really yeah. what the Democrat leader needed was, you know, the yeah. Democrat party needed was Mamala, well, Mamala Harris to, to bring save... them all together. I'm going to save what I have to say about that after you Good, present it, it in our next section. This is time for there us to take a break. And so we're going to do so right now. We're going to hear from one of our awesome sponsors. And after we do that, we'll be here. Knock it off. Knock it off. Sit down. This portion people. of our show is brought to you by Strip. Nut Auto Repair. Tell me, is your car horn broken? Uh uh. Are your brakes getting spongy? I have no sound effect for that. Does only half of the electrical devices in your car work and two of the check engine lights are on? Hmm. Well, come on down to Strip Nut auto repair at strip nut auto we can't promise the best prices for repairing your vehicle but we can guarantee an untimely completion is your engine howling snarling or growling is your engine running the way it should if not bring it to strip nut auto repair for its yearly tune-up where we offer the finest shade tree service done by the finest machinist in all of mid-state Wisconsin. So if you don't like the sound of the horses under your hood, drive on down to Strip Nut Auto Repair today. Strip Nut Auto Repair, located on the corner of the, whatchamacallit, and the, that other street in mid-state Wisconsin. <laughs> You know, we're giving her a lot of time to be able to do things very well over there. I appreciate that. Yeah, the, producer, right. the producer's chair is on fire tonight. It is. It say. is. It is. It is. All right. Take it away, Chris. What you got going for us tonight? Yeah. So these stories are going to come fast, hot, and heavy. We're going to jump into them and move as quickly as we can. But I, I do want to start here tonight. So... Heading over to the Olympics, if you guys have been watching that, uh, this is, let's see here, according to The Hill, uh, Speaker Johnson blasts Olympics for mocking Christians at the Last Supper. Uh, and what was kind of interesting about this is uh, they immediately walked it back, whoever this female was that was in charge of setting this thing up, but you gave like a, you know, a half, half but apology for it and was like, oh, we didn't mean to offend anybody. But, you know, it was really all about tolerance, even though we're, you know, again, what Speaker Johnson is alleging is that they mocked Christianity. So I, I do have this pulled up here so I can show it to you guys and, and really let you be the judges of what you think that that looked like. But here's a if you guys can see this over on your side, I'll make it big. But that's the that's the look of it right there, right? And then if you yep. follow my if you follow my mouse, this guy right here. So there is a child uh, of note to point out in the midst of all these uh, drag queens. And then this guy right here, uh, if you were to pull that out and zoom in <clears throat> on him, he seems to be having like a pretty terrible wardrobe malfunction to the point of his uh, genitalia coming out of his very tight spandex oh. at the bottom. Oh. There's another thing that a lot of people were pointing out. So I can't oh. can't pull that up for you guys to see for obvious reasons. Uh, for but obvious that, they, reasons, but they yeah, were this... They were saying that. Um, and so anyway, the the individual that was in charge of planning this 
He said, again, it's all about tolerance. He said, no, no, no. It wasn't supposed to be representing the Christian Last Supper. It was supposed to be representing the Feast of Dionysus. And so a lot of people immediately went to Twitter to be like, I don't know what the heck that's supposed to mean. They look it up in the, in the, in the Greek, Dionysus was the god of wine. Mm -hmm. and debauchery and partying uh and so then immediately a lot of people pointed out they're like well when the when the ancient greeks would get together and have the feast of dionysus one of the things that they would devolve into in worshiping this god was orgies uh, that mm -hmm. actually involved children because the ancient greeks were much more progressive than our modern society so that's not even any better like if no. that's what you guys are trying to depict, it's not any. Like how is that the? Right. How is that your right. your comeback? Like no, no, no. We were we were depicting an orgy filled debaucherous party in ancient Greece. Mm. <laughs> like what with children in it? <laughs> what is what is wrong with you? How is that a comeback? Right. And then there was another part where they had a white horse uh, coming across the river Sin. A lot of people pointed out that that looked like a pale horse you know, uh, depicted in Revelation. So there's just a lot of stuff flying back and forth. The The main point of the story is a lot of Christians across the world got mad. They got very, very angry. And they're like, they're really kind of pushing back on this to the point that France as a country apologized on behalf of the terrible opening ceremonies that they put on. <clears throat> and I just kind of want to get your guys' take on that. Like, is this, a, is this too much pearl clutching as far as Christians are concerned? A lot of people are saying they're boycotting the Olympics now. They're not going to do it because it's too gay, you know? Or do you think it's uh, like, ah, what's the big deal? TV manufacturer um, Samsung uh, pulled um, – I just got a word over here from my uh, producer. What? It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> hey, producer. Oh, South Korean phone company. Yeah, but they make they make make TVs too. Anyway, um, but How yeah, about refrigerators that's, too. That's, that's what it's. Uh, that's what they originated with was uh, telephones. Um, have pulled one billion dollars in advertisements out of the Olympics over this. Oh, that's a chunk. Yeah, yeah, that's a chunk. <laughs> uh, what do we make of it? What do what do I make of it? Uh, I'm going to kind of take, I, I heard another, another guy and, and it's, it's where I'm coming from. Did, did this surprise anybody? There you go. Yeah, that's a good point. It's France. Um, like France. I has mean, been it was like, planned. It the passed. word menage a trois is a, is a French thing. Thing. <laughs> you know, um, so they've always been like way further down the road and way it, more, more progressive. When than it even comes most of Europe. to Jesuit priests, which uh, France is predominantly Catholic, when it comes to Jesuit priests, which is the one of the major sects out of um, out of France, uh, they are liberal in their thinking. They um, are are progressive in even in the Catholic Church. So even from the point of Catholicism, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why this would surprise us. I was listening to another commentator and he said, have we not read the book as Christians? This is the kind of thing that we're going to take in the world. So yeah, that's, that's, it makes me sick, turns me off from wanting to watch the games and man, uh, producer and I were watching female, water polo and it was pretty stinking <laughs> awesome because they had the cameras underneath and you think those chicks are just like have the ball and they're ready to throw it into the net right wait no. did you just did you just say they put the cameras down in bikini bottom yes they did and <laughs> you're sitting there and you're going oh my goodness this is vicious they got giving them wedge some the other player wedgies they're grabbing on to them while you're not really? looking they're dunking them underneath the water there was the one american girl greg gets the ball she gets a pass goes in the middle and the other gal is behind and she's also behind in timing the american goes around to do a a, a shot for the goal and i mean she just literally grabs her around the throat and pulls her back into the water I'm just like, water polo. I, water polo is no joke. Man. All right, so, but yeah. Anyway, talking so about like I was, women's... yeah, like I was saying about uh, water polo, it it cracked me up. Uh, Drew Berquist was talking about this on his on his Rumble show. You you know who Flava Flav is, right? Yep. So it goes back before a lot of these kids' time, but apparently Flava Flav single handedly sponsored the female water polo team yes. this year. Which that was kind of a funny thing because you would think that if they're representing us as a nation. 
like I didn't realize a lot of the funds that came to sponsor the athletes into the Olympics where they represent the United States were private funds, private funds. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. So that kind of blew me away. I said, I thought that was an interesting anecdote, but anyway, going back to where this story is going and this, this article right here ties in. So we just looked at what the opening ceremony looked like and whether or not it was mocking Christians or not. Um, and you see what they are perfectly okay with putting on, whether it's debaucherous and, you know, ancient Greek, or it's completely making fun of the Christian faith, but then uh, developing, this is on Beach Grit. I'm not into surfing. I don't know anything about surfing, but a buddy of mine on Instagram said this to me, and I, and I thought it was interesting. Paris 2024 officials forced gold medal favorite to remove Christ the Redeemer graphic from his surfboard. And this guy goes by, I, I'm not going to get your name on it, brother. He's originally from Brazil, but he goes by Chamba Wamba, I guess, is his uh, his moniker. <laughs> she... Uh, Tianka? That was my Joao Tianka. <laughs> I'm probably I probably ruined your name, brother. I apologize. But they they completely, you know, told him because they said, hey, painting is absolutely illegal. Like you can't have anything painted on your on your board. You can't it, we are enforcing neutrality here in France, both religious neutrality and so on and so forth. So you gotta take that stuff off. And you know, if those are the rules, like this is kind of where I come from on that. If those are the rules and they're enforced against every race, religion, color, or creed, then them's the rules to be in the competition. And uh, right. you sign and you sign up for it. You you sign but up for it. But right. it's when I see the duplicity of, hey, you can't have that. That's Christian. And then you turn around and you see what they show the world in the opening ceremonies. And so now I'm going, all right. You know, and so when they when they go, you know, hey, Chris, why do you think that why why would you think that they're coming after Christians? I don't understand. And you just go. A lot of this stuff is starting to feel pretty, pretty one sided. Pointed. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm starting to feel a little targeted over here. Yeah. So, but anyway, that's that's just what I wanted to what I wanted to bring up. So staying in Europe, this story is very interesting to me because it marks a kind of like a marked difference in how european countries are treating individuals of the muslim faith so i have yep. to jump over to al jazeera to find this one which is you know we're we're on the deep dark side of the news guys <laughs> as far as the yeah. is concerned yeah but germany we're on germany, the other side <laughs> germany bans muslim groups citing extremism ties to iran and hezbollah berlin insists action against islamic center in hamburg is a mm -hmm. pretty big city in germany guys not linked to quote, peaceful practice of the Shiite religion. So for anybody that doesn't know, there's basically two big sects, S-E-C-T-S, -E in the Muslim faith. You have the Sunnis and the Shiites. Shiites are uh, predominant, predominantly your Persians. They come from the ancient uh, kingdom of Persia, which is modern-day modern Iran. Modern-day Iran. And then, and then you have the rest, uh, which is the largest group of Muslims in the world, which belong to the Sunni sect. Uh, and that's basically headquartered in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. uh, right? Which is where all of the, uh, the, the, t uh, what is it? The temple, not the temple of the rock, but the, uh, um, Mecca. I have to look up. That's where, Mecca. that's where yes, Mecca, Mecca is. With the, with the large, which with a large cube in it. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, not going to get off too far of the weeds on that, but they did do this raid. They closed down this Islamic center, um, and they arrested several hundred Yes. That were and I've seen I saw the videos of it. It was pretty wild. Uh, it was a daylight raid. German authorities like rolled up outside of it, and then you just started seeing the wagons open up and just they raided fifty five properties in total mm -hmm. linked with this group. And, and so this you see is them, not you see them show up and they just start pouring out, and German German officers are just running down the street to surround these places and. And according and was, to that article, uh, or report, according to reports, that is not the first mosque you showed a mosque. That's not actually yes. the first mosque they've gone after. Do you know? Did the does your article say how many mosques they have gone after? It just said fifty five properties. Fifty five properties. Group. Three of them have been mosques now. Germany has walked into the mosques and shut them down. Yeah, that's that's pretty wild to me because Europe as a as a continent has been pretty progressive in letting Muslims like fill, you oh. know, in, filter into their countries. Absolutely. For the better Paris part of the is decade actually now. one of the worst places where the uh, Olympics is taking place. Paris is one of the worst places. They right. have a whole Muslim quarter that operates underneath um, 
Sharia law, and the no government way. doesn't even go this. into it. They they leave them alone. So you know what? So they have autonomous zones inside. Of- yes, yes, <laughs> outside of Paris, because that in always- the suburbia Paris. Mm-hmm. Well, that never turns out badly. <laughs> Anyway, you know, the first yeah, thing it says is, is it, it says the Parisians are not sovereign over their own city. No, of course they aren't. But anyway, I thought that was interesting because when you see situations like this, they usually mark the beginning of something new. Yep. That that is that is a pretty wild change in policy for the Germans, and to do it that decisively. Um, oh. It's with, first off, uh, I saw that article, I, I listened to somebody read it, and th- that particular mosque, the, uh, by the way, uh, for our listeners, you saw that blue mosque, there is a video of them destroying it and tearing it down. That's what the, I'm saying. The other yeah, it, wasn't, mosques, it, it wasn't just they went in and they said, okay, cool, as you were, we're going to arrest these people, they're terrorists. They said, no, like, we are shutting down this mosque and they tore it down and they tore it down yeah yeah Yeah. um and and what and and so that mosque has been being uh observed since 1997 and merkel uh the prime minister merkel who was there allowed it to go as finally as far as it did she is gone and now that she is gone look at what they're doing right Okay, so that's that's how much that she was actually a part of that. And Germany is remembering its past and they're going, look, extremism didn't work real well for us uh, coming out of the 1920s and into the 1930s. Yeah, something big happened somewhere Um, around then. And I'm trying to. Yeah, Mm -hmm. they were all on vacation. (laughs) It was the 1938 Olympics and Jesse Owens. That's that's what it really was. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Or 36, 30, 36 Olympics, I believe it was. Oh, so, yeah. How many other countries right now are willing to walk into a mosque and destroy it in order to to get extremism out? And I'm not going to call it religious well, <laughs> extremism. <laughs> no, words did hear, matter did you hear here. Me? What, did you no. hear me? He said, what other countries? I said, well, Israel. <laughs> At least one other that I can... At least, you know, you got me on that one. You got me. But that's what other countries do and try to call it religious extremism. That's not why Germany shut it down. It wasn't religious extremism. It was political extremism to why they shut it down. So we got to start watching our words. There was another thing that came to me, uh, political extremism versus religious extremism. We, We get it really monkeyed up. And and it and it really mucks up the works. And so we do that and then people have, oh, you know, we don't want to offend them because of their religion, which is really funny because the segment we're talking about offending Christians, you know, and going out and making fun of what Christians Why believe. Why are you we- all so, you know, let, let's stop clutching your pearls. Why are you all so sensitive, silly right. Christians? But you won't do that to a Muslim. Why? Because they'll holler Allah Akbar, grab a screwdriver, and they will get you. Yeah, they have a tendency of just blowing up when you make a <laughs> nice one. Nice one. Gotcha. How will that help our algorithm? Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's a clip, Kay. That's a clip. <laughs> so anyway, we got to watch that word. There's another one, and I really want us to start a trend. Are you ready? Help me start this trend. I realized, and and you and I both know that people use this term all wrong and they do it all the time democracy democracy our democracy we're democracy that democracy the united states democracy can i help somebody out here we are not a democracy in fact benjamin franklin was asked coming out of the of independence hall what did you give us mr franklin a democracy or a republic and this is hilarious because the president tried to quote this the other day and he completely yeah. misquoted it yeah yeah he, i he saw said, that what did you, what did you give us I, I think he said a uh he said an empire or a, or a republic and i was like you can't even get the quote right but it's, yeah, yeah, it's gotta... what did you give us mr franklin a democracy or a republic to which he famously replied a republic, a republic. madam if you can if keep you it. can keep it Right. right. Because so, in yeah. history, who who had a republic before us and lost it? Rome. Rome. You know, and, and, and it's just, it's what happens when people 
which yeah, which if, I think people need to go back it. and remember what happened was uh, <laughs> the C- the Caesar at the time was granted emergency powers because Rome oh. was at war, mm-hmm. and then he never gave it back to the Senate when he was nope. done. Never gave because it back. What, uh, he gave them some do. some form so that they felt good, but he did not relinquish power. Nope. No. And so anyway, here's what I would like for us to do on, on this channel. Um, more for you over at Live Fire and the other things that you do, but I seriously challenge you guys. I finally realized why the left keeps going a democracy, a democracy, a democracy. You know why? The word is closely related to Democrat. It's a subliminal message. Democracy, we, you know, our democracy. And so it makes it look like they're the purveyors, they're the owners of, of democracy because they're Democrats. Well, you know what? We need to start pushing back and doing the exact same thing with our republic. Our republic. It's our republic. We need to use it. And we're better off than they are because guess what? We are a republic. We are not a right. democracy. Well, well and really they sh- do. It's a two pronged attack too, because what they say is with the whole like blasting your brain with the democracy argument, and then at the same time, like the very next thing is because anybody that denies that we're a democracy is you know right wing. That's right wing extremist thinking, and that that makes yep. them dangerous. Yep. Uh, so there's that immediate castigation of them as like. They're the existential threat, the enemy to our democracy because they don't believe that it is one. See, and so it's and like democracy. Are... See, we're we we're the keepers of the truth because we're Democrats. We yeah. have democracy. Well, actually, we are a republic, and so if you're going to make that argument, you want to vote Republican and think of Republican because we are a republic and we are the purveyors and the keepers of the republic. Yeah, and. It's it's hilarious, too, because our founding fathers were so brilliant in the way that they set things up. If we had a straight democracy and it was just up to a popular vote in these United States, there is no way that we would have gun rights. There is no way that we would have what little free speech that we have left still standing. New York and Los Angeles would basically own the entire United States and whatever they say would go. And our founding fathers were looking at this when they put it together, and one of the very first problems that they ran into is trying to set up the representative government was New Jersey and Rhode Island looking over and being like, well, now hold on. We got to make sure that we get as much representation as North Carolina and South Carolina and Georgia do, because otherwise the South is just going to run roughshod over this whole thing. And they recognize the problem right off the bat. Yep. To which then the southern states started trying to count their slaves and their population so yep. that they could get more representation. And, and there was a whole bunch even of got into there's the a whole bunch of stuff that started going into that. And so, which by the way, interesting correlation today, they still try to just import people. In, so it's not people are <gasps> actually getting wrapped around the axle of like they're not going to let the illegals vote. Well, they actually are trying are. to do that in some places for oh, local yeah. elections, oh, yeah. but that's really not the point. It's actually deeper and more sinister to that because what they really want is to be able to count them on their census because the more people that they have in the state, regardless of whether or not they're American citizens or not, gives them more representation in Congress and more electoral votes. And they're perfectly fine with taking it to the electoral college, but I digress with that point. But it's just funny. It's like the Democrats have always been that way. Like it's always been their line of thinking. If I can't, you know, uh, if I can't have, they they just they find a way to get their way. Is is where I was going with that. It, uh, but yeah, it's a brilliant. True. It's a brilliant system that our founding fathers set up, so that it ensures the minority is never ruled over by the majority. That is, no. Americans, our unalienable rights are protected across all classes, across all states. Yep. Right? Yep. And, and, and the fact that it has stayed relatively unchanged, I mean, it's, it's under assault every day, but the fact that we still are as free as we are today shows you just how brilliant and robust of a system that it was. And that one side can't just control another. Right. There's always something the mi- there's always something the minority can do to keep the majority from roughshodding over top of it. Hundred percent, and that segues brilliantly into this next story that I was going to because if you think like these these are the shysty things that they're trying to do to ensure 
that they can do that, right? So I, I immediately want to rotate into talking about censorship. So this is from the uh, the Post Millennial. Google accused of election interference for omitting Trump assassination attempt from autocomplete. Google issued a statement and said that its autocomplete system is calibrated to remove suggestions, quote, associated with political violence. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, we're, you mean, we're you mean back like when he got censored again, right? You mean when he got like when he got shot in the head? Yeah. Like that kind of political violence? Is that what you're talking about? Oh, no, no, it's, it's oh, no, in the no. backlash. Trump so, was not a victim. It was staged. <laughs> yeah. Ha- have you seen those? Yes. I don't oh. even have anything to engage with that with because at some point no. it's so retarded yes. that I'm like, listen, I yes. if you can if you actually believe that, then I like I got I got some beachfront property in Arizona. I actually that you should saw take a, look at. a girl said, you know, it should have been in the forehead. And I, I don't have any I have I do not have a condemning soul. But he should have been shot in the head. I don't have a condemning soul. And I'm soul. like, do you do you hear yourself? You no. don't condemn anybody. And I actually I heard Trump. that sound I heard that sound bite and she says it in the same breath back to back. And she you're does. Like, she does. You can't, I don't that, like, too. Did you? Did you, did you <laughs> <laughs> and and then that's you know the, the Hannah and I have been talking about that. This is Mrs. CFC guys, we've been talking about that this week. Um, and and the scripture verse keeps coming back to my mind. Like, don't cast your pearls before swine, unless they trample them under their feet, turn around and rend you, right? Mm-hmm. And so the idea there, and Jesus was absolutely right. Uh, and then I think Bilbo Baggins may say it even more succinctly in The Hobbit when the trolls pick him up and they're like they're arguing with the dwarves, and he just looks at the dwarves and he goes, "You can't argue with them." They're half wits. <laughs> you just can't. right, but it's it's the same sentiment in that you know what? Logically, you you're not on the level, and for me, it's just gonna be like beating my head against a stone wall. So let me let me pass over that one and then talk to a person who is has an IQ that's like slightly above the freezing temperature of water that may understand what I'm saying to them. Gotcha. That has the capacity for understanding, sure. right? But I do yeah. have a video pulled up here of this. Just uh, really so that, quick, you got in yeah. your scripture reference. I want to get in mine. It's uh, nice. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I believe. If anybody wants to follow me up on that, that would be great. And let me know if I'm right or wrong. Um, but anyway, we second Corinthians, <laughs> second Corinthians chapter four, you'll find in there the verse that says, and if our gospel be hid, it's hid. It's because the God of this world has blinded their eyes. Sure. And, and it, that is talking about the understanding of the gospel, but I also, you know, I, I don't think I'm going outside the realm of, of God's teaching when things, it, it's not just the gospel, other things that just seem to be so obvious, uh, like being able to see ourselves, uh, yeah. is hid. Um, like uh, seeing a bunch of, of trannies re- reconstructing the Starship Last Green Supper Ford. with Jesus and it? then going, yeah, that's, that looks evil. Like, I really don't have to put too much, too much analysis into it. I could just look at that and be like, that's not right. <laughs> right. Uh, producer, producer found it for us over here. Uh, if she can bring it up on screen, it is second Corinthians chapter four, verses three and four. Um, Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I try to do some things, but you know, I, I'm getting to that age where I'm remembering things wrong uh and and so forth so anyway uh when she gets it she's going to throw it up on screen for us here cool. we're going to do a, a little little movie magic if you will um or or podcast magic anyway post production covers a multitude of sins <laughs> yeah she doesn't want to do post production she wants to do it all live and then uh when we're done with the show she can walk away and say oh, oh that was a good show there you go <laughs> yeah it's coming up here in just a second Anyway, so to to keep riffing on this, though, I am going to go and show everybody after that when she's done yeah. the video sure. of them actually trying. You got it? Yeah, sure. It's not on my screen. I just don't want there to be too much dead space here. Yeah, I don't want there to be any. That's why I was was going with it. <laughs> well, go ahead with your with your next story. Yeah. So anyway, so I do have back to the censorship story that we were talking about. So I do have. Uh, right here, what this looks like, what people were talking about when they said that they were trying to look uh, for Trump. Can you guys see that all right, right there? 
And so this is what it looked like the other day. So where we were typing this in, this person's trying to say assassination, assassination, assassination classroom, assassination nation. I said, what, what's this? Assassination uh, attempt on Reagan, Hitler, Fidel, Slovakia, Bob Marley, Truman? I'll have to go back and look that up and figure out what that is. Teddy Roosevelt, Andrew Johnson, FDR, still not in there. Truman, Teddy Roosevelt, the Pope. So we get all the way down here to where he literally, he'll say Trump. Still, T-R-U-M. And it was still trying to say Truman, and then well, nothing. look, there's no, there's nothing there. There's, there's no search. There's, abso there's absolutely nothing. So I, I'm going to pull up here, and we'll do this in live time. Uh, here okay. we got right, but here's the search bar right here. So um, I'm what was the date? What's the what's the date on? on that was, this? Uh, was July July 28th. Was that other video? So this is 28th, as of and today is the 29th. So that was just so this yesterday. Is a day later. So let's see here. Sad. Don't guys don't laugh about my spelling. Ha ha. It's not even. Uh, two S's. Is or your no? screen is your screen up? I don't see your screen. Oh, sorry. Did I leave you behind? Yeah, my share bad. your share your screen so we can see you do a search. Let's see oh, if it's my still bad. on. I left. Yeah, I I left you behind because I forgot to move tabs. That is my that is my bad. I thought you followed me when I clicked straight over. So yeah so here we go so we're gonna try it you guys can see that one now right there we go yeah all right so, so this is us today july 29th so i'm gonna refresh this just to see because now it's just acting weird all right here we go so i got my my autocomplete uh nothing ss you're missing an s that's one of the reasons a s s a s s there you go I'm getting nothing. It's not even trying to help me. That's the weirdest thing, man. Yeah. When I did A, it was like, hey, do you want to do this stuff? And then as soon as I said as, let's see if it'll do it up here. There we go. Let's, go, let's just go straight in the, now you guys can see what, I'm, what I've been looking up. Uh -huh. <laughs> Make sure your history's clean. That is nothing. It's not even auto-completing anything for me. Okay, something just popped up. That was the weirdest there. All right, so this one's showing autocomplete. Let's see. All right. On Truman, All right. Truman's first. There it is. So he's finally showing up. So in there, when, once I went over to the, the, this landing page, there, he popped up. It's the one, two, three, four, fourth thing down. Fourth thing down, but still in the original one, you still didn't get anything. You had to do a couple of other clicks to get there. I had to go to another. I had to go to another, another landing page and and use the. Yeah, it still didn't want to cough it up. Nope. It eventually did. I had to search for it three times before it did, and then it started coughing up. And it's like this is what you've been trying to look for because my mm -hmm. history's turned on. Mm -hmm. That is wild. That is just absolutely wild. That is severe censorship, and and that it's number four. You know that's been searched for way more than than, than Truman. Well, that that this that should photo. be number four. That should be number that one. Photo of him coming out of there, like that's one of the most significant political events of my entire life so far. And like here, you got Google that's basically trying to use the neuralizer from freaking Men in Black to just be like, nope, that didn't happen. Oh, yeah. wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't get my glasses on in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Hey, hey, you ever flashy thing me? <laughs> be honest. <laughs> uh, by the way, do we have that scripture that I wanted to show? Here we go. And even if our gospel is veiled or hidden, it is veiled to those. Where did it go? <laughs> Can you go back to the first one again? I didn't get to finish reading it. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ who is the image of God. There you go. And, and I, I, I truly believe that, that when you got people that can say in the same breath, you know, that I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't condemn, I, I don't have a condemning soul. He should have been except, shot in the forehead. Except for execution of Donald Trump. <laughs> no, but, I, but I'm not condemning him. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Except to death. They, you know, and, and they can't, they can't see themselves. Why? You know, the, the light is just you not discovered that feature. Uh, that's not there. <laughs> I know we're what gonna she's gonna doing. Take the a break. We're going to take our, our last break right here. Cool. And I do believe we've got one more story when we come back, right? An international story.
Yes, I do. Yes, I got that one for you. All right. So we're going to we're going to go away. We're going to do a little commercial. And when we come back, uh, we're going to talk international story. So hang right in there and we'll be right back. This portion of our show is brought to you by Dr. Lipschitz Psychosis Service and Therapeutic Counseling and Spa. Is your common sense leading you to feel alone? Are you not thinking like the others around you, leaving you without friends? Well, don't try to find people with common ground. No, come to Dr. Lipschitz Psychosis Services and Therapeutic Counseling and Spa. At Dr. Lipschitz, we use the latest waterboarding techniques to change your mind. Our counselors are familiar with the latest Asian and dark arts that can create the pain that it takes to change your mind. Need drugs? No problem. We are assured that our certificates are in the mail from our courses that we completed on the internet. And we are guaranteed by our off-market suppliers that we can get all the drugs that you will ever need. So don't go through the hardship of having to explain your position to all those losers a thousand times, only to be eventually alienated. No, come to the woke side now. Most conversions can be completed in three easy treatments. And when you're finished with counseling, each session ends with a half-hour spa bath. So call Dr. Lipschitz Psychosis Services and Therapeutic Counseling and Spa and get converted today. <laughs> we got a we got a new sponsor that just signed on too. I'm excited to present it to the people, but it's Slope Roof uh, Sloped Roof Security. Oh, LLC. oh, that's right, that's right. Yeah. Slope Roof Security. Um, so. Thank you. Thank you for signing on Slope Roof Security. We're glad, glad to have you guys here. <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> it, right. You know, there's an, there's another one. Uh, we just finished our last session and I'm not going to go way back with this, but people who can't see themselves. I got fifth graders. I got third graders that can lie better than that. That's what I said when uh, I mean that joke. On, I got on third it. graders that can lie, but you know what? I bet I yeah. got first graders that can lie better than that. The -uh. roof was too sloped. <laughs> the roof yeah. was too sloped, and we all turn around and look at the other group that is on the roof that has actually a bigger pitch, not much bigger, but a bigger pitch than the than that roof. Yeah, and there's a group on it, and it's like. Well, uh, and I was I wasn't going to go too deep in this tonight, but man, the Secret Service has so much egg on their face because that, and then they immediately rotated off of that and tried to blame it on the local law enforcement that was supposed right. to be standing that post right. and and said that they weren't because it was too hot, so they were bringing people right. in from the heat. Decided to to, to be let me let me ask instead. you as an active member. The, let me hold on. Let me ask you as an active member of the military. What and whose world? Right. Does it's too hot to do my job when you work for the government? <laughs> right. In whose I know. world does it, that it, work? No, it, it cracks me up. I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. Was it hot? On the Donald roof? Donald Trump was standing in the sun in a three piece suit giving a speech. He didn't seem to think it was too. He did take his tie off. Oh, actually, anyway, you know what? No, he, he had his tie on. The Secret Service took it off, checking him out. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah, that's it true. Just, it, whatever. And then anyway, ABC actually interviewed that. SWAT I watched team, it. I watched and it. I was just like, oh, no, because they basically if you guys haven't seen it, I wasn't going to play it here tonight. Uh, there's one more piece of the story to come out that I'm waiting to go back and really dig sure. in on it. Sure. But they basically said, like, look. The Secret Service, they, they were supposed to brief us when they showed up. The counter sniper team from the Secret Service didn't get there until the day before the event, which means that, you know, that that's such a big deal to us in the tactical community, because if you get there the day before an event, it means you didn't do a proper reconnaissance. You're, you're not set up. You're, you're not set up. You're not set up. Your weapons aren't sighted in proper there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into right. you don't just walk out and be like oh i'm gonna sit here and look that way like it that's not how that's it works. not how they it didn't works. get there the, until the day before they were supposed to brief the local law enforcement the local law enforcement was like they never they never briefed us nope they never gave us the face and then brief. we didn't have any communications with them and the that's whole time. that's the thing that i had everything like, on it's like and, and to me where's the I'm comms like, 
Where's the right? Cones? And I knew because we talked about that the night of, oh, like the day mm-hmm. of. And I remember one of the very first things. You remember one of the very first things that I told you? Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, one of the greatest breakdowns in this whole situation has to be communications. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was just watching the way everything unfolded, and I'm like, if there was a a talk commander, tactical operations center commander, or something like that, CP command post, mm-hmm. like there should be a radio in there that's like master frequency that they can talk to everybody, everybody all at once. Everybody, you and I'm like, I can tell you, and everybody's tell on you, one. Right, and I can tell you based on watching the way that everybody reacted that some group is listening to one radio net, another right. group is listening right. to another radio net. Right. And, and, and how do I know? Because you can go back, replay the tape, you'll hear a Secret Service agent mount the stage. One will say, shooters down, shooters down, shooters down. And then the other one is going to say, where are we going? What are we doing? And then they're going to be like, get him up and move him. And another one goes, no, 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 no. And then the first one goes, no, shoot her down. And he goes, and then they pick him up and they move. They're not even, the people that are on stage together aren't even aren't, listening aren't together. To, to same comms. So right. it's like the whole thing. I immediately could see it, you know, and like you, the whole and, thing. And, 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 and everybody goes, I don't get it. No, if they were all on the same comms, you would have never heard anybody have to say shoot her down because the sniper would have said shoot her down and everybody would have known it. I mean, there, there is that, there is that the stage, battlefield, right? There is that battlefield fog. They came up on the fog. stage and had to announce it to the group verbally, and you could hear it over the microphone, right? Because they weren't it, on the mess. same comms. I mean, it was a mess. I, I a will mess. give them this. There's the battlefield fog. Everybody's covering the president. Everybody's screaming. Sometimes you can't hear what's going on in your earpiece. I've used those same earpiece types that those guys use in the secret service i've used those headsets before when i've done low this stuff it can get hard to hear especially if people are screaming in your other ear i'll give them that but you can tell that they're not on the same net sure. no you can like you can 100 percent tell and, and so it's just like I, i'm to the place now uh with everything and, and god bless the people that are not letting this story go because this is again it's one of the greatest political events in my lifetime if not the and watching all the information coming out about it, the American people need to see how incompetent the government has become because there's this veneer of legitimacy that the government has had for so long to where it's just like, oh, look at this badge. Oh, he's in the FBI. Oh, he's in the Secret Service. He must be a badass. And it's like now with watching this, people are realizing that it's all smoke and mirrors, that these people are not nearly as responsible and nearly as tactically proficient nearly as trained as they need to be and it was it was all on full display and we need this stuff to go out if we're going to have the ammunition that we need to put away this dei push for good and get away from it okay i'm gonna ask and we've been you saying question. we've been saying it for a long time in the tactical community that unfortunately people usually have to die before like before something's big, corrected before something is corrected and moved and and in this case <laughs> again three people were shot and one person did die i'm going to ask you one question and then we want to we want to move on because we yeah, have, I do our, have one, our I do international have story. story yeah but you just proposed something that i find it very hard to believe but maybe it maybe it is where we are could it be could it be that we so hype our specialties, our special forces, movies, we have them doing things that just are superhuman. Uh, could it be, you know, we've, we've, we've hyped Secret Service work, that we've hyped it so much that when there is a colossal failure like this, that the first thing that we say is, oh my goodness, there's got to be a conspiracy. In other words, that it, it could be so flawed, but we put them at such a high level that we forget that, that maybe they weren't really as good as we think because of what we see in movies and that kind of stuff. And therefore, we don't, we don't see the flaws and, and realize that they're not necessarily that good. They they really can't do the superhuman things that movies make them out to do. That's just not realistic. But we put them on that level. And so since they didn't perform at that level, you know what? There must be a conspiracy to see Donald Trump shot. Sure. I, I think that's a fair assessment. I never thought of that before for, until you just said side. what you did. But also, th- this isn't... 
this isn't these guys aren't able to do you know the superhuman like ego check this situation is so comically bad you don't have people on the same net and i and i you, do you back have up. you have buildings inside of your security perimeter that you didn't secure secure you didn't you didn't do a proper reconnaissance of the so site they didn't with put your anybody snipers. on the roof you didn't brief why your isn't local there law anybody around the building if you, you didn't, around you didn't the building, brief, they wouldn't have got up on the roof that's what i'm saying you didn't brief you didn't and establish communications there. with your local law enforcement yeah. You didn't you didn't like like okay, maybe I don't, you don't want to have talk a to command all of them. center so that everybody can be on the same comms. Uh, that's what I'm telling you. This is so comically, comically bad that I'm I'm to the place anymore. You know, they say you should never attribute that to malice that can reasonably be explained by incompetence. But I'm at the point now where it's I'm really like difficult. Th this is starting to feel like malicious incompetence because nobody is that bad. Brandon said it the other day and, and like the way that he said it was perfect. He's so like by who Brandon is. Brandon's my is the co-host of I Came with Fire podcast. He also co-hosts Live Fire guys that's every Friday night 10 p.m. Eastern Standard over right. on Rumble. Go check out I Came with Fire podcast page. That's where the Live Fire goes. Uh Brandon co-hosts over there. He said this the other day though and, and I thought it was so perfectly said that he goes you can't convince me you're that stupid because I've seen the other stuff you've done. So now I don't believe you that you're that stupid or that you're capable of making that level of mistake. You know, and so that that's about where I'm at, too, is I know the capability. I know the training. You know, I've been through some personal security detail training, limited, but I have in my life. And I'm like, just for what little stuff I know, I'm like, nothing, nothing here feels right doesn't pass the smell test i am not buying it it stinks you know and like we need to dig into this because what i'm afraid of is the incompetence or the maliciousness that allowed that to happen is still in the department it's still there because oh, yeah. there's only one person that resigned over this so far not a single other person in the united states secret service has even been reprimanded yet for right. what happened there. All right. And so that means like nothing has changed. Yeah. And there's one other fact, and this is a fact. And I, I don't know, I don't know what to do with this correlation. It blows my mind. And that is out of all the ones that they muffed up on, I don't know how many others they've muffed up on, but on, on, but on the one that we know that they muffed up, there just happened to be a shooter. And the one What's that... What's the odds? What's the, the odds? The one that the, CNN has not shown up to record or stream any of his rallies this, this campaign season. But they were at this one. But they were at this one. You see what Tell I mean? Me. What, what's the odds? That's what I'm saying. Nothing so, about this. Yeah, it, it just is it, so weird stuff. All right. Uh, we anyway, want to wrap final, the show up on yeah, this story, final so story let's night. go international. And this is very interesting to me. So we talked a little bit about Germany and the way that they're dealing with uh, radical Islamism, which is very different. So here, there's a couple angles to this story that, that fascinate me. So protests erupt in Venezuela as questions grow over strongman Maduro. That's Nicolas Maduro for people that don't aren't initiated uh to south american politics nicolas maduro's victory so reigning dictator oh yeah full like venezuela is full communist socialism right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if you don't know the story took over for hugo chavez yep when he died and, and so the 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 points that i want to bring to light on this story right is that the reason there's massive protests is because his political opponent, which I want to say his name started with a G, um, I'm sure I'll figure it out later. But the, his political opponent, which was the pro-capitalist uh, candidate, wow, that word just flew out the back of my head, pro-capitalist <laughs> candidate there in Venezuela was leading in in the election as yes. they were heading into the closing of the polls. Uh, and then you guys can tell me if this sounds familiar to you at all what did all they do? the polls all the polls closed okay. they were closed by the election they have an um, election commission 
the election commission of the election board closed the polls. Mm -hmm. And then when the polls reopened or the next morning, they basically just said more votes were counted after the polls were closed down. And it turns out that uh, Nicholas Maduro did indeed win the win the vote. And he immediately went to the media and declared he was you know, the victim. his his victory. The media there is completely state controlled, you know, guys. So mm -hmm. they immediately backed him up. And this is sparking lots of, uh, of the protests that are coming out about this because the people are saying the math doesn't add up. And they're absolutely correct. There's also reports of Venezuelan military going okay. into some polling locations and shutting those polling locations down. And then, and? you know, what did they do with the ballot boxes? Early, and then taking the ballots and then yeah, transferring they took them. The and, ballot and boxes removing with them. them. Yeah. And there were there were whole polling locations where there are videos of people announcing over bullhorns the the polls have just closed. Uh, we counted the votes and Nicolas Maduro didn't receive a single vote at this location and everybody's cheering because mm -hmm. they don't like him. They're eating rats in yes. Caracas, guys. Yes. Like if you in went Caracas bad, in, in the in best the, city. How bad things are down there. But the thing is, this is communism. This is what communism looks like, and this is what communist dictators do. If you wonder, like, North Korea calls itself the Democratic Republic, the Democratic Republic of North Korea. Woo! And yet somehow Kim Jong-un gets like 99% of the vote every How single time that, that he's up for his election. It's so strange, right? Um, and so here you have it. And I thought I was listening to... Um, even to Putin two... only gets 95% of the vote. Yeah, right. <laughs> How you get the last four percent? I must know. So he, <laughs> he, um, I was, I, I think I was listening to Tim Cast and one of their panelists made a really good point, And that was that when you, you can't vote your way out of communism. No. Once it, once it's entrenched, once you go down that, that road, you're stuck like Chuck. You're stuck. Until somebody dies or there's a revolution. Revolution or outside actors come in and change your government for you. Okay. But once you're there, you're stuck, right? You cannot vote your way out of communism. And this is one of the things, like, I, I think this shows if Americans are paying attention. It's like, please look at this. Also, it's kind of rich. It's kind of rich that CNN has the balls to say questions grow over strongman Maduro's victory. Like, uh. Anthony Blinken... The, our, our secretary of state came out to denounce and said that uh, obviously this election was rife with election interference and Inter uh, eh. they did more than interfere and, and basically basically <laughs> said that the united states doesn't recognize the legitimacy of this election and i thought to myself well that's that's really rich yeah, i don't rich. really feel like i don't really feel like the united states has a no, leg they to didn't stand interfere on. with the election it's election just, theft th yeah they just took it they just right? took it but um, yeah, does it, Dad? What do you think? Does the United States even have a leg to stand on when it comes to this right now? Well, there's no moral high ground if that's what you're talking about. I mean, right. By the way, in their electronic voting, now they had a lot of they had a lot of paper voting in the outer places, but there is also a similarity between the company who does their electronic voting and the company that does our electronic voting. I thought I thought they were actually owned by the same people. That's what I'm saying. There's a okay. There's, yeah, I thought, I thought they were both owned by. Connection. I thought they were both owned by Dominion. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. They're both owned by Dominion. <laughs> now, in fact, now we're getting demonetized. In fact, if you want to know where it was used first, Dominion was used in Venezuela before it came to the United States. Uh, so that sorry, could... Karina, Karina Machado. I'm finally reading through the article. So that was the, the opposition candidate, Karina Machado. I thought his so name was like that. Gonzalez. Well, I thought you were right when you said G. I th no, I it says here the opposition coalition. Sorry, the opposition coalition headed by Marina, Karina Machado rejected Maduro's win with Machado and opposition candidate Edmundo Gonzalez claiming their campaign had gathered enough vote tallies to prove Gonzalez had won. Okay, so yes. You are correct, Gonzalez. On Monday, well, you were they too. Said, you, you said Gonzalez. You said yeah, sorry. They with G. said they had obtained more than seventy-three percent of the tally yes, sheets, showing more than the, six million votes for Gonzalez, the and best only that two they point could seven do, million for Maduro. The best that they could do was come up with only fourteen percent for Maduro. So before we came on the show, I've been been following this issue, and we well, found you know the golden a, rule of communism, right? 
the golden rule? Who has the gold yeah, has, makes the, the rules. Makes the rules. That's right. That's right. That's, that's, that's the golden rule. <laughs> what we found out uh, but just before we started recording this show tonight is that uh, citizens were taking over the international airport at Caracas because they did not want Maduro fleeing. Do you, 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 they're out you think for it's blood. getting that bad? I, I gotta, I gotta, that, I gotta follow was, this story then. That was because one report. Up, and the, the other getting report deposed. before we just came on to record was that uh, the uh, civilian army were taking off their uniforms because the mobs were outdoing them. Guys, you are watching the overthrow revolution of a communist dictatorship in real time. This is fascinating to see. It really is. Yeah. Oh, man. I hope 7 Special Forces Group is having a field day. <laughs> I hope. Um, hardy, now, hardy something voice. like this has happened once before. So if somebody wants to go see what – by the way, this is – that's democracy. So if you, if, you, if you want a democracy, I just want to show you what mob rule really looks like. But this happened oh. when Romania— see, see the French Revolution. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I'm talking about what's being filmed. If you want to see it, I mean visibly see it because we had movie cameras there. You can go and see the pictures. Uh, I can't remember his name. He was the uh, Presidente of Romania uh, back in the uh, 80s. Uh, they overthrew the Romanian government, was a, which was a part of the Soviet bloc. And when they did, it did not end well for him. Uh, in yeah. fact, uh, it's right around, it was right around 29 years ago now when, when they did that, 1988, 1989, um, maybe early. I, 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 I mean, well, here's the thing. But like, they just celebrated the, fi the 25th year anniversary of it. Hmm. And when they came to the end of it, Basically, they had a kangaroo court trial, um, found him guilty of, uh, uh, of um, slaughter of his own people and of uh, wasting national um, uh, resources on him. And they took him out back and executed him and his wife. And they put it on uh, national, their national TV for everybody to see. <laughs> and and so if, if somebody's gruesome you can see the pictures uh that they have a still of him and her falling and the front of her dress is just riddled with holes communist dictatorships only ever last so long the only reason that china's has lasted as long as they have is because china was at least smart enough in the beginning to have its economic free zones which hong kong was one so they're yep. able to bring enough like outside business into the world so so really even though china has been communist since like the 1930s their economic system was always under like stood up by a capitalistic base that they were able to maintain and that's why they they genuinely you know generally had their economic free zones where the the ccp was smart enough to be like we're not going to touch that we'll let them do so that way the westerners can do their business in hong kong and bring us their monies well that went away uh what like three or four years ago now and so what's really interesting is uh, it might be the only thing that saves us from actual open conflict with China in the very, very near future is that just that fast after China closing its economic free zones in Hong Kong, like they are economically collapsing. They're, they're collapsing economically they're collapsing and they don't fast. have the money to come after anybody. If anybody wants to, to know yeah. why they're not in Taiwan right now, they don't have the money to do it. Well, they, they yeah, have figured I, out that if they get into something that is protracted, um, with Taiwan and the U S has two aircraft carriers sitting over there, uh, that, you know, can make them cost, make them pay. It, it'll cost them money that it would send their entire country in, in, into, into a collapse. There's something like it, it, it seven is, it is major kind of cities funny. that they've built that are sitting empty. Ghost cities that, that can handle up to three to 5 million people, each city, something of that size. Mm -hmm. It's a giant yeah. money laundering thing. They they forced yeah. the, yeah. I won't get into all that, but yeah, they have they have those ghost cities that are just sitting there. But it it is kind of humorous to me to realize at some points in my life that I've been you know spared <laughs> terrible times just because of sheer hubris and incompetence stupidity. <laughs> and stupidity. And and it it is kind of humorous to me to realize when you start you know you start thinking about it 
you're like, wow, the stupidities of others have, have saved my life several times. <laughs> so there is that, right? And then also God raises up leaders and God takes them down. And, and I believe it in my heart that God's not actually done with the United States yet. And my evidence for that Again, go back and look at what happened on July 13th. I think if God was done with the United States, then that man probably would have been assassinated. Uh, I think we would be in you gotta huge think amounts that of civil unrest right now, and we're not. And you got to think that there's something that he's going to be president because that it was just so it's just such a God thing that happened to him that spared his saying. life. And Who knows um, what God has in store, you know, but, but let's go back to what you and I keep saying, though. OK, God spared his life that still God is looking for people to do what people need to do for this election to move forward. Absolutely. Right. That, that, that doesn't me, that doesn't to me, set us off. To me, a, a, a right. To me, it's not a call uh, or a, like a uh, an excuse to take your hand off the steering wheel and be like, oh, OK, God's got this election. So we're good guys. Like, no, no, no. no. To me, that's like a call to action. To be like, all right, like it's that whole idea uh, in the Chronicles of Narnia. Um, when you look at the character, for anybody that's ever read it, when you look at the character of Beaver and his wife, and they rescue the Peveril children, uh, Pevensies, the Pevensie children, and they're they're moving them from one place to the other to get them in place to go meet with Aslan, and you know it's like they've been secretly this whole time building up to this and waiting and now they sense it right and they they keep saying that phrase in the beginning of the book which kind of like gets you like goosebumps you're like oh and they're like can't you feel it like the weather's starting to get warmer aslan's on the move aslan's i on can the feel move. it and so that that means it's the time for us to start moving things into place and that means it's the time for action the time of hiding out in in the lodge is over you know because mm -hmm. so so to me that's that's kind of what I'm feeling right now is like things are on the move God's moving and so it's like now's not the time to to sit back and say God's got this it's no that means it's all gas no break press the objective like no it means it's it's time to pull out the stops and get involved and and so let's let's throw this in uh, um, we got two minutes and we want to wrap this up uh, but Chris something that Chris and I are, are working towards and if you're in Wisconsin or even if you're own, in your own state I challenge you um, do the patriotic thing every patriot has a vote it's one person one right. vote and we want to hold everybody to that so. You know, uh, here in Wisconsin, it has been made uh, legal after it was found to be unconstitutional. Uh, we we changed uh, state Supreme Court justices, and now the new justice comes in and says uh, we, we, we flipped. And, and now what was unconstitutional two years ago is now constitutional, and we can just use these drop boxes. And so people go by, and they just get ballots and say somebody is over there you know what i think that person i'm going to register them and i think they want to vote democrat and then they go to these drop boxes and the thing about a drop box is you don't have to have an id you don't have to have anything you use an absentee ballot you stuff you stuff it in the drop box and it's taken as a vote i mean that's voting fraud and so one of the things that they are looking for in the state of wisconsin is people to monitor these drop boxes so that we can get it to one person, one vote. And we're looking to see if we can get ourselves involved and, to, and, and just to do the right thing and go, no, nope, we need to hold people to one person, one vote and, and to work together with different ones and monitor these drop boxes. So Chris has helped put me on the road to that. I will say it's getting difficult yep. to do. I, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time to get people to answer the phone. And here's the other thing, too, that I want to I want to let you guys know. I pulled it up right now. This is on the SCONY. I think I'm saying that website correctly. But report over three hundred and thirty eight thousand three hundred and thirty eight thousand registered gun owners in the state of Wisconsin are not registered to vote. Now, that's not to say that that they're all not voting because several of them could vote independently but they are not registered to vote and that is wild for me because if you're a gun owner in the state of wisconsin and you enjoy hunting the outdoors like that should be a no-brainer for you because there's only one party that is standing up for your second amendment and your ability to keep that firearm which i'm assuming you want to keep and mm -hmm. the other party that continues to run on taking it away from you they want to ban yep. everything I, I, so, they don't make it a and, and then 
And then Wisconsin only lost uh, the last election. Donald Trump only lost the last election in Wisconsin by 16,000 votes last time, guys. That's a razor, razor thin margin. And 338,000 of you that own guns already are not registered to vote. Yep. Right. And so you could see, you know, if you got a friend, I called a couple of family members the other day, people that told me in 2020, they were like, you know, it's not worth it. I'm not going to vote. It doesn't matter. I asked him, I asked him this time. I've been on the phone. I said, you're going to vote this time. And they said, yes, 100%. I made a mistake last time. I'm involved. Yeah. And it's like, man, I hope a lot of you, I hope a lot of you guys out there are starting to feel that way because that's what it is. You text a buddy, find somebody, ask them, hey, are you voting? I don't care who you vote for, but just get them in there and get them involved to go in and vote. A uh, uh, resource for you guys, it's called voteforamerica.org. Org? Wow, can't speak all of a sudden. Say it vote, again. Vote for the number four, vote for America org. And this, this entire website, this entire initiative is about trying to get registered gun owners, registered hunters, right? People that enjoy their Second Amendment right and registering them to vote in their home states. So go check that out. Grab that link. We'll drop it in the description of this video when it drops, and you can share it with with everybody that you know. And listen, folks, here's the game plan. It's really not hard. I don't think it's too hard to see through. The reason for the lying on the polling right now, because there is no way that it is as close. But if they report to you that it's close, then when it comes down to the wire and they go to cheat, you're going, well, we heard that it was within the margin of error. So it could go either way. It was in the margin of error. It can go either way. But let me remind you, it has happened for the last three elections presidential election cycles that we start getting somewhere to midnight and then the election booths of particular states go down two hours later they come back up and the numbers are flipped and the candidates that were winning are not and um, they've done it three times now I've watched it it's a common pattern Uh, they tried doing it again down in Venezuela Uh, they're going to try to do it again here And the only way that it works is if they can tell you that they're keeping the election close. So that way, when they have their number of ballots on the other side, they can, by by numerics, can match it with their artificial ballots. And man, we just, uh, you know, 10,000, 20,000 votes. We just managed to come ahead. Right. She was she was within the margin of error. So it doesn't really get your hackles up when it's like, ah, she just edged him out. She just edged him out. Yeah. 2000 votes. Yeah. And that's why you are going to hear Trump too big to rig is the mantra when he ends up winning by 40 and 50,000 votes, 100,000 votes. Yeah. They're going to be it's going to be so hinky that if for them to try to come up with that many votes that they're behind, because remember, it's not zero zero. They have to come up with 100,000 votes and win. he is already winning. And that may mean 150 to 200,000 votes they may have to come up with in order to win an election. And that that is. And so too big to rig. But there's also other places that we need to get involved where it's one person one vote. We need to get back to that. And so I, 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 I strongly encourage everybody be a patriot, get involved. That's right. And at the very least. Absolutely. All right. We need to wrap it up from there. You got anything you want to say for final comments? No, no. You put a good exclamation point on that. Uh, All right. Don't, don't don't come and complain to me about the state of the country oh. if if you don't oh, yeah. if you don't vote. Right. Don't even talk to me about it, dude. You don't get a you don't get a say. No. <laughs> no. Eat it. Hey, it's been it's been awesome hanging out with you guys tonight. Please make sure that you're uh, giving the video a like, subscribe, follow, and if you could take the link, share it with a few friends. Um, also grab that vote for America.org link, share that with a few friends, that resource too. And I will see you guys the next time on Comic Places. And when we come back the next time, we'll spend a little bit more time on the Bible than what we did on politics. At least we'll get that section of it back. So there you go. signing off for tonight. And when we come back, we want to give you stuff that will encourage you. God bless everybody. Have a great night. We'll see you later. <laughs> Bye.